Welcome to EricksonGuitar.net. Today we're going to talk about some of the fundamental principles of music theory and how they apply to the guitar. Music theory can be a very scary term for guitar players. Sometimes we think of, you know, a lot of rules that we have to memorize that we can't stray from and in some ways we think it takes almost the fun out of playing guitar. Um, makes it too academic. But in reality there are certain fundamental principles of music theory that are important to learn in order for us to have success at unlocking the fretboard and really understanding all the possibilities on the instrument. It's going to be key for improvisation and it's going to be key for your songwriting as well. So what is music theory? Essentially it's the study of how music works and what we're going to do is identify patterns and structures that cut across all genres and styles of music. And what we're going to do is apply these theories and uh, these structures to the guitar. Very often if you take a music theory class, the piano is used as the model and everything's laid out very nicely. Um, it's very easy to see how things work on the piano. Uh, but sometimes on the guitar it could be a little bit more cryptic. It's not as clear. And what I'm going to do is show you um, ways to look at the guitar in a different way so you start to see how these music theory concepts can easily be visualized and applied to the guitar. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a scale. And a scale is a set of notes that is ordered by its letter name and its pitch. And generally we start and end with the same letter name. Now where do the letters come from? They come from our musical alphabet which is essentially A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. After G, we go back to A and we reuse the notes again. So first let's clear up some of the vocabulary about scales. We're going to talk about a major scale, which is a specific type of scale. It's a diatonic scale. And a diatonic scale is a scale that's comprised of whole steps and half steps. Now before we play the scale, it's important to visualize what a whole step and half step looks like on the guitar. So on the guitar, a half step is the smallest distance, the smallest interval that we can travel on the guitar. If I were to play the second string, first fret, and I was to go to the second string, second fret, we would say I've traveled the distance of a half step. If I play an open string and then play the first fret, we would also say that that is a half step. Very often I visualize the open strings as if there was an imaginary fret just beyond the nut of the guitar. So if you travel the distance of one fret, that is a half step. A whole step is the distance of two half steps. So we would travel the distance of two frets. So if I went back to the second string first fret, and I go to the second string third fret, there is a whole step, the distance of two frets. If I go to an open string, I would go to the second fret. As long as I'm traveling two frets, I have a whole step. Now what we're going to do is take these whole steps and half steps and arrange them in a sequence. The sequence is going to be as follows. I'm going to play a whole step, a whole step, a half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So two whole steps and a half, then three whole steps and a half. We're going to do this on the second string starting at the first fret, so let's see what that sounds like. So right there I just played the sequence for a major scale, and that is a C major scale since it starts and ends on the letter and the note C. Now if you take that pattern of whole steps and half steps, and I start on any string, any fret, I'm going to get the same sequence of notes. So let's say I started on the third string, second fret, on an A, if I follow that same sequence I'm going to be playing an A major scale. So we would say A is our root note. So 
So if we counted, we have seven different pitches, eight all together, because the first note is repeated at the end of the scale. That first note we're going to refer to as the root or the tonic. That is a very important note because it identifies the name of the scale. If we start on C and end on C, it's a C major scale. If we start on A and end on A, it's an A major scale. Now the letter names in between are going to change, but what stays consistent is our pattern of whole steps and half steps. What we're also going to do is give each note of the scale, which we call scale degrees, we're going to give each one a number. So let's look at the C major scale again, and this time identify them as numbers. So this is the first note, number one, a whole step to two, a whole step to three, half step to four, whole step to scale degree five, whole step to scale degree six, whole step to scale degree seven, half step to eight. Now in every major scale, half steps occur between scale degrees three and four and seven and eight. Everything else is a whole step. So that's a very important way to navigate up and down the scale just by using the sequence of numbers. So if I go to the A major scale and I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So again, my Half steps occur between three and four, and seven and eight. Now it's very useful for visualization to learn these scales on a single string. And eventually what we're going to do is turn these into patterns that are a little bit more easier to play and stay in a single position on the guitar. So for example, a C major scale. easier to play it in that position than it is to play it on a single string. So what you'd want to practice is try going to any string, any fret, and playing that pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And after working with that for a while, you'll be ready to now take the scale and play it in position. So practice playing those scales on different strings, starting on different frets, and before you know it, you'll be playing a major scale in any key, starting on any fret, and then you'll be able to now take that scale and transform that into movable patterns that are a little bit more finger friendly, and those are the shapes that we're going to talk about next time. Till then, have fun playing your major scales.